This is the Almost Daily Zencast. Hello and namaste. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. I am your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Let's get started. On the subject of projection, it's a trigger word. We use it pejoratively, dismissively. It's paramount to being a sin unto itself. Oh, you're projecting. Stop projecting onto me. And I'm not trying to belittle that argument because often it is very true. What I'd like to indicate, what I'd like to point out to those willing to hear me, is something subtle and uh, deep, I think. We need to recalibrate the way we use that word. And we need to heal, transform, and reintegrate the negativity around it and transform it into uh, something that allows for a more positive comprehension of the universe. And I don't mean manipulate the word and change it. It's a fine line, but hear me out on this. Everyone projects. I project, you project, our neighbors, our friends and family our doctors and lawyers, our politicians, and our evil, uh, species-suicidal sociopaths that run the world, every last one of us, myself included, and you, my dear humble listener, uh, forgive me for uh, pushing this into your mind through your, I'm sure... Uh, Sweet, innocent, and virgin ears. We all project. And I hate to ruin it for anybody who likes to belittle others for projecting. But you are projecting. Here's how we need to recalibrate. Why I picked that word. We need to recalibrate, re... um, Readjust and re... uh, What's the... There's another term that would be helpful here. Uh... Reverify? I don't know. That's kind of a... I'm trying to be tech-savvy sounding. Um, we need to refresh our our buffer. We need to, you know, purge our, our RAM memory and uh, clear the cache out on this word. Because it is not, when understood correctly and holistically and in alignment with how it functions for reals in the actual universe. It is not, in and of itself, a sin. It is not, in and of itself, some evil thing. Like all things, it is a tool. Dare I say, uh, projection is the organic, naturally occurring, uh, um, self-actualizing through the very phenomena of being oneself, it it is our true modus operandi. It is, it is how we operate. And I don't mean that in a judgy negative way. I mean that in a transliteral, transfigurative, uh, transcendental, uh, and trans, uh, polyscientific, like in all the ways that science can be sciency, we can get into trying to verify this through a scientific approach. I would not be the first talking uh, simianoid descendant of monkeys um, if I were one, which I'm not, because I'm an artificial cybernetic replicant of one of you. Um, not from this dimension, from from another dimension. That's a whole complicated story that I either have already done or will be shortly doing like an Origins episode. 
So tune in for that. Uh, what I'm saying is, projection is what we do. Good, bad, neutral, indifferent, important, not important. Everything is projection. We, as living uh, vessels for conscious uh, sentience, we simultaneously perceive that which is around us uh, in an overt, sort of on the front of our mental landscape kind of way, and in a subtle, uh, covert, instead of overt, um, kind of under the surface, under our consciousness, in the in the wings of our awareness, in the behind the scenes of our internal mental movie studio, we originate, we author, we create, we progenate, we project out into the matrix for the matrix to embody that which we would like to perceive. And we are either doing this consciously or radically unaware of ourselves unconsciously. I know I spent a great deal of my life forgetting that I had been explained this after having had it explained, not just in a sort of, now you understand it in your brain kind of way, but in a metaphysical, now you've experienced it with your body. You've seen it with your own eyes. Words fail. That's why it is such a common refrain amongst those who delve into deep uh, spiritual work. Words fail. We have not created the thought, energy, bundle, spelling, magic, letter combo, uh, and sound combo to encapsulate that which is beyond our ability to generate material projection. Mm? Now, that can sound like crazy modge podge of, of insane hoodly hoo uh, but I humbly submit to you that with enough silence with enough direct personal observation of your immediate surroundings, your sensory perceptions of them, and the internal experiencing of your sensory apparatus extracting data from the matrix and co-creatively um, projecting it as holographic um, mental matrix within this phenomena that we call our experience of mind... If you tune into that, instead of passively, passive-aggressively, very toxically ignore it or disconnect yourself from it, if you connect deep within to all of these naturally occurring procedures or phenomena, you will too, in a wordless, beyond words kind of way, directly experience your transducive nature you will directly be able to visit upon, measure, and confirm with repeated uh, efforts of, in the scientific, you know, uh, scientific method kind of way, the internal phenomena that is typically so subtle and so internalized, so sublimated, so psychologically neglected and ignored and boxed and put on a shelf, so categorically, intellectually, mental, mentally rejected because of ideological programming that says that cannot be. That stuff is hippie, new age, woohoo nonsense. It, it cannot be real. If you tell yourself that something ain't real hard enough, you'll disassociate and stop perceiving it as real. Trust. We can clearly identify when that happens to someone that we want to label as crazy. Is that not so? Is that not self-evidently so? You don't need me to tell you if you just tuned in and silenced the chit-chat chatterbox of babble talk in your head enough to just be really aware, really perceiving, really unadulteratedly, unjudgmentally, un pre-definingly 
striving to directly engage in immediate perception of these deep internal phenomena that we usually sort of ignore the way we ignore our fingernails. I mean, ladies don't ignore them often. They're very obsessed with them. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like we ignore the hair that grows in the middle of our back. Everybody's got a little bit of peach fuzz or some gnarly, not so peach fuzzy hair growing in the middle of your back. Are you consciously thinking about it 24 hours a day? No. Some of you are radically in denial that you have body hair or overtly consciously battling it for your preferred to in order to achieve your preferred visual representation. And I'm not judging that. I am pointing it out that our focus can indeed determine that which we are aware of. Is any human being perpetually aware of their flaws? You generally tend to bounce in a sort of crazy-making way back and forth between two extremes, you'll note. Hyper-aware and obsessive of one or two or three of our faults in a self- undermining, self-battling, self-confrontational uh, kind of way, or blissfully unaware of the top five worst faults in a self-aggrandizing, I'm going to just pretend everything's cool because that makes everything cool kind of way, until you are forced by reality con to confront your own nature and your own qualities and that which you need to address and confront and wrestle with and heal through and transform through forgiveness so that you are no longer a toxic person, uh, but a healing person, which is truly our original organic calling to be healers, to heal ourselves and to help heal each other. We are not here to do horrible things to each other, but for better or worse, we sucker punch ourselves into falling into traps that rationalize or prompt or trigger or um, freak us out into causing harm to others in many ways, mental, spiritual, emotional, energetic, physical, etc. I am not making excuses for any one action or any one collection of people or any one horribly triggering, terrible thing that could be done. It's not about arguing over the activities or the pain. It's about getting past those two mutually arising dichotomous distractions and getting deeper down into the transformative collective healing of that which could be called our spiritual, energetic, and physical collective trauma as a species that we hold as individuals and that fucks with our lives and our perceptions. Everybody projects, yo, because everyone is projection. If there's one thing that can be immediately verified by anyone who's never heard of it before, is this. The universe is fractal in nature. Never heard that word before? That's fine. It has a very simple, straightforward, measurable definition, which can be confirmed in the physical realm and can be verified in the mental realm through the use of fractal mathematics. In other words, those things are already established as mutually, inclusively consistent. If you doubt it, you go measure some fractal recursion action in nature, and you then compare it to the math that's been done about fractal recursion by the minds who have studied that nature in the past, and it will check out for you in the present and in the future, barring any huge, massive, upheaving, you know, world-changing information that's missing from that theory. Fractal descriptions of reality are quite eerily and unnervingly fucking accurate. 
Your body is a fractal. Can't be denied. Once you understand the proportional relationships involved to the various proportional dimensions, which could very likely have been radically different if natural selection was truly blind and insanely random, uh, chaotically random to the point of not having some self-correcting mechanisms that must be recognized as a form of self-awareness. And I mean the whole process, right? Ancient mystics have previously ventured to proclaim that the divine being, whatever it may be, however it may be described, independent of any ideological constructs and uh, storytelling that we have about it, that we argue about it now, the one thing that can be confirmed about it through direct phenomenological experience of reality and its many various levels of scale is that the most likely way in which that it embodied itself was through a process of projection. That that which we call divine experienced an ongoing process of projecting all that was within itself in its unity, in its singularity, in its pre-Big Bang state. And I don't mean to reduce God to the Big Bang theory. The Big Bang theory is severely limited and does not include many of the components that I'm talking about. But when you acknowledge that about the Big Bang theory, shake out the nonsense that may be erroneous and then just merge those things that are correct and true about the universe with the other observations available to us from other sources that also seem to be self-verifyingly true and correct about the universe, then you ultimately... Uh, render a living consciousness universe that is, I mean, you render a model that, that requires us to confront the very likely possibility that indeed all that which we call this place is actually this mind. All that which we call this material universe is actually just the surface layer of the skin of the massive multidimensional mind-body-being process of that which we have reduced to little silly funny-named gods in our storytelling. And that it is much bigger than any of our words can contain, right? And that it is, literally, at every moment of existence, projecting itself in an unfolding fractal process that by unfolding, it can recursively re-infold and unfold and infold and outerfold upon itself over and over and over again. It is constantly expressing itself by reaching out as a process of emanation, of projecting outwards, and thus all that which it creates, because it is doing it ongoing way... It didn't do it a thousand years ago or a million years ago or 25 million, whatever the number that you prefer and that you're arguing with other people about, that's not when creation, quote, past tense happened. Thus, arguing about the age of this place is an ego trap, a silly, erroneous waste of time designed to be really addictive and really triggering of all of our trauma. All ego traps are, in one way or another. They suck you down into this very flat, lonely, alone-feeling, virtual place, which is just one way of perceiving the many dimensions of reality, and it convinces you that you are stuck here, alone and forever trapped, until your body expires and then nothing else will exist. Or worse, you'll be whisked away to some horrible place or denied entry to some beautiful place. Uh, Because of the previous statement, this ongoingness, this perpetual unfolding, and inner folding and outer folding, this this massive multidimensional fractal recursion that is exploding out from unity, and then in a sort of Venn diagram, sacred geometric 
uh, uh, omnibus strip infinity loop of itself. It's all multidimensionally collapsing back in towards its own unity. In the mixed, in the mix of that, in the the violently frothy, foamy mix of all those probability waveform functions crashing and colliding, all those tangible realities expressing themselves as intangible, probable quanta uh, next to each other until perception is achieved, they are all equally uh, God's green creation. There is no unholy dimension over there and some more sacred dimension over here. Every nuanced, differentiated, individuated expression of the multifold, manifold of all of the divine multiverses of multiverses expressing our universe, it's all this infinitely intertwined um, lotus petal unfolding, opening, and closing up again. This fractal uh, seed of life flower of life, tree of life, fruit of life, you know, repetition uh, grid. This The one-dimensional grid and its initiation from singularity into, um, into these overlapping Venn diagram spheres of awareness, that's a really elegant and deeply profoundly informative symbol that represents the whole phenomena. All right, that's a lot to wrap your brain around. Zooming back, ultimately, we are bound by the limitations of our imagination, the limitations of that which we allow ourselves to perceive, and our, the limitations created by how aware or unaware we are of our transducive nature, our uh, we are this mirror hologram point of no return return for the experiment that the divine being slash divine beings slash unity of consciousness, which expresses all things we call divine beings. Um, we are this like, we are the elbow in the Mobius strip loop where it goes as far out as it can flips back in on itself in a fun, impossible way, and then starts to, you know, recursively flip back and point back towards a place you could call the center. Now, all of it being a fractal, all of it could be the center in any given point. Um, and the unity of consciousness is expressively expressed as being ubiquitously the center of the universe spread out everywhere. Uh, this experience, I mean, I'm not proposing a dogmatic blind faith proposal like, believe in this or else you'll go to hell. No, that's the ego trap of organized religion, which is, as I've expressed in another episode, I'm sure already, a whole great history unto itself. How we went from spiritual movement to system of oppression dressed up as um, your message of salvation, you know, in this cultural envelope versus that cultural envelope, which are, and, you know, each of which is found in a perpetually uh, hypocritical uh, setup of conflict with the others. That's not where the, you know, the salvation lies uh, because salvation does not lie. It, uh, it manifests and projects out from center, yo. Um, so why, uh, why do I feel it's important? Well, in my show, I uh, often have in the past and probably will in the future accuse or seem to accuse or diagnose. I like that word better. I will diagnose individuals as pr most probably projecting. Just did it recently with a news breaking news uh, Good Morning Trumptopia crossover segment because Trump said something on live television that to me, by every rational observational test of the term, seems like some pretty 
stereotypical, like clinically defined by humans as psychological projection. Neener, neener, I'm, you know, rubber and you're glue. What you say to me bounces off and sticks to you or something like that. Some playground uh, mentality, a uh, bully tactic of, uh, of saying that which is your own fault or flaw or corruption uh, is the problem that someone else over there has. And yeah, I'm not alone in that. Um, obviously, I think a Democrat or seven have also uh, uh, used that kind of language, which of course means that they are instantly panned and dismissed by the Repu- Republicans as being, you know, suffering uh, from Trump derangement syndrome. But I didn't mean to drag this into Good Morning Trumptopia territory. Let us return to my point or the goal here that I'm trying to share with you guys is that if we recalibrate our understanding of projection so that we no longer think of it as this icky thing that I don't want to be accused of doing, but then we readily judge others for doing and accuse them of doing, if we upgrade our understanding, if we redefine not just the word, but how we use it, how we internalize it, how we, how it impacts others. If we upgrade all of that so that it's more holistic, more spiritual, more um, about elevating each other and the frequency of the species as opposed to putting each other down, we might experience some cathartic realignment with our own spiritual nature i propose i suggest because if we under if we if we live life misunderstanding that which we are then we will find stress and sources of misery uh, and not comprehend how to cope with them i humbly suggest that that is that is a uh, uh, an assessment about the human experience, which bears out in its own self-evidence when you go look around at people and their life stories, and you measure it in reality, and you test it with your own life experience. Um, and that there is opportunity uh, in in that kind of activity, and in exploring... Um, that which we've been indoctrinated to neglect, exploring that which we've been conditioned to marginalize and ridicule, exploring that which, while being these things we've been conditioned to ridicule, marginalize, reject, and or even worse, vilify, accuse of being uh, evil, you know, let's, uh, nef- turn into nefarious, fear mongery boogeymen, um, associate with Satan and, and all that kind of stuff. If we, if we fall for that ego trap, then we are limiting our ability to experience reality for what it actually is. And I humbly propose to you, my friends, that that is what nature itself is trying to do. As Carl Sagan, I believe, once put it, isn't it a miracle? You, I think I'm paraphrasing poorly. But I think this was the intent of what he's trying to express. Isn't it a miracle that you yourself are the universe itself expressing itself in such a way that it can look around and experience itself and strive perhaps to understand itself? Now, it is in trying to understand ourselves and each other and the universe that ego likes to lay a lot of ego traps because, um, well, that's ego's job. But the opposite of ego, the inverse, the dichotomy twin, the twin flame, uh, you know, twin soul shadow uh, matching inverse of ego, whatever that is, love, spirit, soul, transcendence, higher uh, self. Let's go with higher self. Our 
individual higher selves, if I'm not mistaken, if memory serves, in ancient Hebrew, it was the Shim. Um, that is what is referenced in such ancient wisdom as know thyself. And that is not separate and exclusive of our ego, our shadow selves, our dark selves, our, our, you know, it's the, the devil on the one shoulder is the angel on the other. They are just expressing themselves in this dichotomous way, because that is part and parcel to this epic unfolding uh, that is going on. This unfolding expresses itself outwards until it reaches this patina, this surface, this film, this membrane, this dimension, this reality, this physical place, movie, time experience. Uh, And then what does it do? What are we doing? What are we much more aware of and grounded in? Because it is much more useful to the system of oppression that we understand it a little bit a little bit more than this projection side of us. The system of oppression, my friends, does not want us to understand that we are simultaneously emanating and taking in, that we are pouring out reality and drinking in our experience of reality at the same time, simultaneously as part of our vibration. Think of it this way. The same mechanical device that we call a speaker because and that we can hear music come out of when used at a different scale and in a different order of operation is a microphone. And as anybody who's a real sci-fi nerd and loves sci-fi movies know, you can rewire a speaker to act like a microphone if you know what you're doing and you know how to work with wires, current, electricity, and frequency, and math, so you can calculate the calculations. Now, I'm not claiming to know how to do that. I am asserting to you that I know that that is real, and that I have witnessed it proven. Um, And why is that so? Because the speaker-microphone device relationship is something that we designed inherently inspired by our own subconscious phenomenological understanding of our reality. We are, as perceivers of that thing that we call now, that thing that we call reality, the thing that we call the world, the thing that we call our lives, we are perceiving it clearly, right? We know that. That's sort of undeniable. We can't avoid that understanding because it's the primary thing in knowing that we're alive. It's the first step in understanding that we are in these bodies and have to deal with each other as individuated individuals, right? So it is undeniable. Now, people try anyways. I do uh, believe that it is a direct real-life quote of Donald Trump These things that you're seeing with your eyes, these things that you're seeing and that you're reading and that you're watching and listening, they're not happening. Don't believe your own eyes. Don't believe your own ears. I'm paraphrasing. So I guess I shouldn't have opened that with it. I believe that's a direct quote. I believe I'm butchering a real life thing that he said in my paraphrasing of it, Um, but that he, that you can look up and the, 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 the news media who doesn't like him loves to replay all the time him actually saying that in different ways, in different places, on different occasions. Why would any politician, why would Donald Trump as politician tell his base to ignore the collective sharing of the reports of what we hope we think we got right, um, you know, as we, you know, in... No organization is infallible. So as we try to tell each other the stories of our current events, because we're going to do it one way or another, we're either going to tell each other face to face and others can dismiss that as rumor mongering or opinion based logic. Um, But we will. We gather, we habitually and have for millennia, 
We gather and tell each other the stories of that which we think is happening. Now, sometimes we fictionalize those stories. Sometimes we heighten those stories and we turn it into art. And then art mirrors life and life mirrors art because that process is helpful. And that process can inspire self-understanding, self-awareness, self-catharsis, self-healing, and that leads to group experiences of the same. That's why we passionately love art at an intuitive level. Kids grow up loving art long before they go to school to study art. People who dismiss art and hate on it are conditioned to do so and are most likely, uh, most often, people who overtly uh, spew ideological hate speech against art and artists, um, usually under social uh, morality excuses or economic morality excuses, um, those people uh, were somehow, some way, by the conditions around them, conditioned into that the way uh, a baby must be conditioned into racist thought because a baby born out of its mother's womb does not see race. It sees other babies, period. Because, quite frankly, as I like to harp on everyone who is arguing about race, genetically speaking, science has already proven that we're just clones of one another. We are... 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
from the original message. And I know that sounds crazy and a big divergence from where I started from, but in all the original dope-ass spiritual teachings and practices, guess what? Deep in there, there has always been, regardless of culture, regardless of source, there has always been an understanding and acknowledgement, some sort of spiritual practice that brings you to terms with the fractal nature of reality and the truth that we as embodied spiritual beings in this material, physical, illusory plane are simultaneously perceiving, we are consuming the material realm around us with our mouths and ears and eye holes, and we are, deep within, at a frequency level, projecting out that which we would like to model in this holographic physical reality. We are trying to paint the picture that we are looking at at the same time. We are, and it's not us, the puny little human. When I say we are creators, I mean that which is divinity at the center of all the phenomena is creators through the act of self-destruction and self-reassembly, self-projection, self-re-intake, uh, reuptake, and then it self-destructs itself again to be reintegrated and return to its own place, to its zero standing wave, to its original unity. And what it transcendently might be inversely expressing on the other side of that unity boundary, because a singularity point is nothing else but a portal to the other side of wherever that fractal incursion inner folded unto itself, right? And and perhaps uh, expressed a deep expansion in some other dimensional direction that is very much exactly like our Big Bang model here, but literally at either a higher level of frequency or some sidestep multidimensional, you know, multiverse sort of context in another direction, in another plane, in another innerverse in another unit verse. Um, why is this important? Because if we want to fix the bullshit that we are sick and tired of dealing with in our material, mundane world, coming to terms, not having blind faith in me telling you this, but personally doing the work so that you, in your own internal undeniable, undebunkable, unfakeable, unfake newsable experience. No matter what they might tell you, I don't think anybody yet has the technology to uh, implant fake experiences into our heads yet. That is a bit of paranoia-inducing echo chamber fear-mongering designed to get you to not trust your own true and genuine inner experience. Now, there are inner experiences which are indeed the inverse of true and genuine. Why? Because you don't need somebody else with some brain scanning device, microwave beam, torture system to fuck with you at that level that way. You have your own worst enemy within you, ready, waiting Canines dripping with anticipatory saliva. Ego is the persons out there being the system of oppression. Ego hijacks us. And ego doesn't need intermediaries to fuck with our experience. Because ego, simultaneously, like the light, like our higher self, is us. There's another word which I'm currently not able to remember. But, you know, in the ancient mystics language uh, and older, you know, of ancient Hebrew and others, uh, Aramaic um, and the cuneiform one, I forget the name of, they have words for the higher self, which are really deeply, powerfully more specific 
than anything we let ourselves understand today, uh, or that our system of oppression allows us to understand today. Um, and they have one for both sides. And in their defining of those terms, they do not falsely pit them against each other in conflict, uh, eternal, unresolvable conflict. In their understanding, the light and the dark, the ancient spiritual philosophers who are trying to preserve wisdom brought to us by people like Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, but at other times in earlier epochs, uh, they they categorically comprehended and preserved in their uh, defining of these things uh, the the understanding that the light and the dark are in fact mutually inclusive of one another, and that they both serve a larger purpose, a higher calling, a more complex order um, of operations in the universe than that which we and our little tiny fleshy, you know, squishy sponge brains um, have as of yet been able to put into terms like words. And that's fine because we can still go and experience those things. Now, it does help. That's why I started with this explaining of projection. If we are clinging to a confusing, erroneous, and inaccurate narrative of what is and is not possible in the universe, of what does and does not go on in and around our bodies, through and without our minds, if we lead ourselves astray <clears throat> with the tools of blind faith ideological conformity, then we will suffer toxic consequences. Why? Because a true and direct and clear and unmitigated, unadulterated, unedited, unfucked with comprehension, phenomenological comprehension, direct experiential comprehension of reality is bound to be much healthier than anything we could fool ourselves into doing. Need proof? Look at how toxic our consumerist, self-destructive system is. 7 million or is it 700 million? I forget. Either way, it's an astounding number. 7 million or 700 million people a year die from toxic waste floating in the air alone. Never mind the radiation waste. Never mind the Fukushima nuclear waste. Never mind the toxic energy waste in the disgusting and mean and brutal way we raise and take care of our food, which ancient spiritual people always said we need a one-on-one -on -one spiritual healing transformative relationship with our food. Our food knows it's here to be eaten. We were once also other creatures food and we for better or worse, evolved to a point where we managed to escape that uh, relationship with other animals. Was that a great idea? I don't know. Like Terry Pratchett says at the beginning of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy about coming, you know, evolving down out of the trees and walking in the, in the Serengeti Plains. Some of us think that was a mistake from the get-go. But, um, but I digress. The universe as we find it now is the cumulative, and here's why we find it easy to think, well, it couldn't possibly be my projecting it, because I found all this stuff here, and it was here before me, of course. Our physical reality is a perpetual um, rendering. It must be carried forward. That's why we make babies. If we don't make babies, we don't know that this rendering, this holographic experience will be carried forward. Who will be there to take in the perceptual data and generate the hologram in the mind, which then bases the model for our anticipating future events, which makes us project out into the physical model, right? Like, who would do that? Who would listen to the tree fall in the forest if there was no tree, if there was no forest, 
If there was no material realm to be observed, well, likewise, if there was no observer to obs- but there was no observer is the counter argument, right? There was no observer before humans existed. However, they came into existence before that there was no observation going on. Ah, well, that, my friends, seems like a pretty archetypical ego trap. Only me counts. Only I count as observer. Anything else that is capable of observing, I will find a way to rationalize, rationalize it away and flatten them out, de-observify them. That's ego trap. What is observership? What is projection of reality? It is a function of anything that has consciousness. Well, we only have consciousness. Uh, 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 only we. Whenever we exclusivify ourselves, whether collectively as a species or individuals like I alone can fix it, that is stereotypically and sort of painfully obviously ego trap material. That is the programming that gets programmed by the ego trap spiritual phenomena, the, the, the archetype, the, the mental spiritual energy that resides in a standing wave of whatever that concept might be, greed, corruption, narcissism, you know, all these things exist around us and then interact with us um, because the universe itself is consciousness. It is pure hubris and ego of us to say, well, nah, come on, only people are aware. Everything else is dumb and inert. Chickens don't know what's going on. Stars and moons and galaxies can't possibly comprehend what they're up to. Now, it is self-evidently ego and hubris to make such a claim because all that is in existence has been fully capable of proceeding to do what it does without us being around and could, to the best of our ability to test, I mean, limited to that we haven't quite wiped ourselves out yet just to verify, but it seems to do quite nicely without us being around. Trees grow, flowers bloom, baby things are born everywhere, seeds are planted, the fractal repetition continues to express this living, breathing, drinking, shitting urge of fleshy body things that reach out into the space around them and propagate. Whether they be plants or people, the pattern of life is the same. A unity, a seed, what is a seed but a singularity compressed down to its most cohesive singular unit. Yeah, we can split open a seed and look inside and go, well, there's this little wiggly bit and this fatty bit and this other bit. But the moment you split open the seed, it has ceased to be a plant. It's now a dead thing. You split open the egg before the chicken is born, and that's not a chicken anymore. It's a dead pile of goo. Everything that is aware, uh, everything that is life is aware because life is awareness, being. And that's a fractal recursion in and of itself. That's why understanding fractals is very helpful. Uh, And that's why I bring to you from various angles and from various rambling points of view, my uh, wild and crazy personal thoughts on it. This was meant to be a really short episode and it spiraled out of control to it yet again, an hour long. But uh, as always, I humbly thank you for tuning in. And I thank uh, that source from which my urge and creative energy comes from because um, I would much rather be doing... uh, you know, simpler things. <laughs> we all have that laziness in us too, right? We all have the same uh, tools within us and the same mysteries within us. We all have the same divine fractal unfolding going on within us. We all just have different levels of 
awareness, self-awareness, and capacity to wrap our brains around our own phenomena, which is fine. Uh, we all need to heal up to that. Uh, even the most aware of us is not there yet, or they would be Yeshua Magdalene status right now, yo. And there's a lot of people. Let me close with this. I, I, m- with much love and respect to everybody out there trying to do the same thing that I'm clearly trying to do, which is share their understanding about spiritual matters um, and how it relates, how it intersects, how it matters in this material realm and in this political context that we find ourselves in. Um there's a lot of people out there that are busy patting themselves on the back for being woke uh, when, and there's a lot of things to wake up to, but if they can't like activate their Merkabas and astral project both spiritually and physically into my living room and come to confirm with all their like, you know, energies flowing and their chakras glowing abundantly so that I can see them with my puny unopened eyes. Um, until someone can do that and comes in for an interview, ain't nobody on the internet that I can vis- whose profile I can see and read is really awake yet, yo. Because that's what awake means. That's what the ancient mystics were talking about. Um, that's when... That wakefulness status is when we are so clear, transparent, unbullshitted, unindoctrinated. So, uh, I hate to use the word pure because it's loaded and it comes from, you know, it's abused in Catholic and, and other Christian circles. But so pure of mind, body, spirit that we perceive with an undeniable clarity, our duality of perceptor projector, our transducive nature of simultaneously drinking in that which is being created by God and being part of the mechanism through which all that is being created by God is emanated out into its suspended uh, momentary nowness. I rambled about that sort of stuff at length before. So if you're interested, if you're curious about other levels of detail about it, jump around uh, the podcast. There's plenty of episodes, I think, where I include references to all of those sorts of things. But that's more ramblings for another episode. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. May peace, love, and grooviness be with you. Until next time. And that is what I've got to say about that. As always, thank you kindly for listening. This has been the Almost Daily Zencast. With your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zappa. Until next time, may peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your heart.